Hi, I'm Matt from Black Box Mind, and this video is for the Final Cut Pro 10 editors out there. How to install Adobe Premiere. <laughs> JK, LOL. Uh, Final Cut Pro 10 keyboard shortcuts, mate. Sick. There's so many edits on nearly a daily basis. Keyboard shortcuts right now are the only reason why I still have an index finger on my right hand that is still, you know, relatively functional. And if you're just starting to learn Final Cut Pro 10, or any program with a load of keyboard shortcuts for that matter, it can take time to learn them. And more importantly, it can take time to learn the ones that you're gonna be using time and time again. Also, speeding up the way you work is pretty much guaranteed if you know a program's keyboard shortcuts. And the faster you work, the more cheddar that you'll be earning. And let's face it, who doesn't like editing with a good bit of cheese? Caprice de Dieu, un amour de fromage. Uh, so here are my top five Final Cut Pro 10 keyboard shortcuts that I use on a regular basis for editing online course videos and just videos in general, really. <coughs> Changing the duration of clips on the timeline can be a bit of a ball ache, especially if you've got loads of them that you want to change to be exactly the same length. Now, this could be for bringing pictures down onto the timeline, or it could be for bringing in slides for something like a video lecture. So what you can do is select all the clips that you want to be exactly the same length, then hit Ctrl D and type in the length that you want all the clips to be. Bear in mind that when you're punching in your numbers, remember you're adding hours, minutes, seconds, then frames. So for example, 15 seconds would be 1500 and one and a half seconds would be 112 if your timeline is in 24p. If you then find yourself with a load of unwanted gaps in between your clips, there are two ways to sort this out. The first is to select all the clips and drag them down onto the main magnetic storyline. This will automatically bunch all the clips together, then simply drag them back up to where you want them to be. But if you're like me, I can get a bit paranoid about losing audio sync with clips automatically moving around and shifting about on the timeline. So, to fight those fears, try this slightly longer method that doesn't involve moving clips down onto the main timeline. Select all the clips you've just resized, then hit Command G. This creates a secondary storyline with your clips in it. Then simply select the blank clips in this new storyline and delete them. Your resized clips will now all snap together. What I like to do after this is to drag the clips back out of the secondary storyline again, just to keep things clean. And this quite nicely leads us into the next keyboard shortcut, which is Command T for quickly adding cross dissolve transitions. Dragging and dropping transitions on the timeline is, let's face it, slow. Even the old option click and drag method for duplicating the transition on the timeline can get old pretty quickly. So select all the clips that you want to apply the transition to and hit Command T. Et voilà, tu as la transition partout maintenant. Now, here's a keyboard shortcut super combo for adjusting all of the lengths of the transitions that you've just added really, really quickly. Now, sure, you could go through and adjust the lengths of each of those transitions individually if you're masochistic, or you could simply do the following. Hit Command Z to undo applying the transitions. Now, bear with me here, there is method in my madness. Then hit Shift Command Z to redo applying the transitions. And now you have all the transitions applied back on the timeline and importantly, they're all automatically selected. Then this means you can use the old Control D keyboard shortcut I showed you before and type in your desired length to apply to all the transitions at exactly the same time. You are most welcome. And don't ask me how long it took me to figure that one out. This next keyboard shortcut is again about retiming clips on the timeline. I don't know about you, but personally I find clicking and dragging to adjust the length of clips on the timeline you know, really annoying. And as you can imagine, I was pretty relieved when I found out about this next keyboard shortcut. Set the playhead to where you want the clip to start or end on the timeline. Then select only the beginning or the end of the clip you want to change and hit Shift X. Doing this will snap the beginning or end of the clip to the position of the playhead. Another cool thing about this is that it works with both lengthening clips and shortening them as well. Pretty simple, but pretty damn effective. Sometimes when I'm editing a video lecture, there can be changes that get made to slides after the recording's taken place. Annoying? Yes. Difficult to change? Not anymore. 
Before I found out about the Option R shortcut, switching out clips on the timeline with something else would take what felt like an eternity. Dragging the new clip onto the timeline, adjusting its length to be the same length as its predecessor, move it into position, erase the old clip and make sure the new clip fits properly. Well, Option R makes this so much easier. Select the clip that you want to change on the timeline. Then select the clip in the media browser that you want to replace it with. Then simply hit Option R on the keyboard. This will replace the clip with exactly the same length on the timeline. And it switches out the clip even if you have transitions applied to the timeline and the transitions stay in place. And finally, we've got the to-do marker. Now, normally when you're working on projects, markers are a really great way of kind of highlighting specific points in a video. But if you've got a load of corrections to make, try using the to-do marker. This is a really great way of adding in a marker, yes, but you can also add comments to those markers. And this is fantastic for you know keeping track of what you've got to do in a video. Now you can simply add the red to-do marker to the timeline with Q. But what makes this type of marker really interesting is if you hit Q two times in quick succession, it'll pull up a little comment window to note down what it is that you have to do. When you have a few to-do markers that you're working with on the timeline, you can make use of the timeline index to quickly find the one you want to work on. And once you've completed the task, check the completed checkbox to mark as done. And this will in turn turn the marker green on the timeline to say that you've done it. And there you have it, my top five Final Cut Pro 10 keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time when I'm editing videos or online courses. But if there are some keyboard shortcuts that you can't live without that I haven't put in the list, then let me know in the comments down below. If you found the video helpful, why not hit the like button? And if you wanna see some more from the channel, then consider subscribing. That would be great. That would be really helpful. Really helpful. Anyway, that's it. So I'll see you next time. And uh, until next time, stay safe. God, these sign-offs are shit.